Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Welcome, welcome, one and all, back to Christmas Street. I, of course, am your host and curator around these parts, Patrick Smith, and welcome to yet another episode of Christmas Treat as we rewind back to the past to yet another classic Christmas screening. Because Christmas isn't Christmas without any presents. Thus begins both the movie and the book upon which it's based, Little Women. Many, many adaptations have been made of this classic text from Louisa May Alcott over the years. And pretty much every single one of them is great. And I think that speaks to the amazingness of the original text from Alcott. But one major criticism over every single adaptation that I've seen thus far was that Amy was always a character that you ended up hating by the end of the film. And also it didn't really address the fact that Alcott kind of wrote the romance that Joe has at the very end of the, the book and film as kind of a, you think you deserve this, you think this is what happens in real life, then here, you get your schmaltzy ending. Whereas instead, in the film that we're talking about tonight, the 2019 adaptation from writer-director Greta Gerwig, well, it addresses both of those major concerns, and I think because of that, makes it the definitive film version of this text. But there's something so sweet about a slice of life uh, that is so real and tangible about both rebellion and family and earnestness and, and so desperately trying to achieve your dreams. All of that mixed together, I think, is the quintessential American story, but it's also told from a female perspective. And with Greta Gerwig behind the, the camera, you know that you're also getting that perspective like poured into the screenplay and poured into the filmmaking. And because of that, I think it makes it just such a, a delight to watch from start to finish, even in the tough parts. Because I think Little Women never shies away from the tough parts of life. And I think that makes it all the more real, all the more honest. It's a great text and has managed to survive throughout the ages because of this very fact. And that's why plenty of people over the years have taken this to the stage. Schools and whatnot have, have adapted this book and brought it to life vivacious life on the stage. But there's something so free and whimsical, but also earnest and true in Gerwig's adaptation here. Something that I think only a film could truly accomplish. It has the energy that Joe does, but also we get filmic translation of the wisdom that these titular little women gain over the course of the story through love and loss and life. And it makes it a Christmas classic, but a, a, just a classic film and a classic story. If you're just watching Little Women at Christmas, I think you're doing it wrong. But to be fair, I believe that about just about every movie we've covered here on Christmas Street. And also, I love this film, and because it starts with that very line, it immediately jumps to mind when I think of Christmas movies. But it's not just a Christmas movie. It's the truth. And that's why I think it's been adapted so many times and why Louisa May Alcott's novel is never going to die. So with all that being said, I have a classic episode for you. Like I said, this is a rewind episode. So instead of me continuing to yap, yap, yap before we even get to the video where I yap, yap, yap about all this, though I do think it's a pretty great episode, which is why we're rewinding to it. Join me over at the VHS player and we'll get this episode started. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. Welcome back to Movie Club. My name is Patrick Smith, and I am the host and curator here at this club. This week, we're back screening one of my favorite movies from last year. Yes, last year was actually a pretty stacked year for great movies, and this is probably the one I saw the most in theaters. I'm talking, of course, of Greta Gerwig's adaptation of Little Women. Now, I'm not just a casual fan of Greta Gerwig. I adore her work. Whether that's her acting work in Noah Baumbach's films or her two most recent own directorial efforts. 
I mean, she's kind of fantastic and has really tapped into the zeitgeist of what makes art interesting and cool and, and, and neat right now, but also finds a way to communicate things that are deep and true and personal to her, whether that's through the incredibly personal, loosely based on her own life events in uh, Lady Bird, her fantastic directorial effort uh, that was her debut, actually, or her follow-up with Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Now, this isn't the first time this book has been adapted to the screen. I mean, good lord, it's one of those evergreen books that keeps being adapted over and over and over, much like Pride and Prejudice. In fact, just two years ago, or three, now that we're near the end of 2020, uh, the BBC produced an adaptation of, of Little Women, uh, but it was for a miniseries. But what is still true about this adaptation is that it captures both the spirit of the original novel and, like pretty much all of Greta's work, uh, is very meta. It's about either making movies or telling stories, or in this case, it's about the process of the book that the film is based on being written by the characters in the book. It's kind of confusing, but I think I explained that pretty well. Don't get me wrong, not only is this film adaptation probably my favorite thus far of Little Women, I mean, we've only had a couple. We've had Joe Marsh be played by uh, Winona Ryder, Maya Hawke, and a couple others, but now Saoirse Ronan, who, oh my God, after my own heart. And she's so great and such a great I, maybe Muse is the right term? I think that might apply here for Greta Gerwig. Because she's been in every Greta Gerwig film thus far. And I'd love to see that partnership continue in the future because honestly, they bring the best out of each other. Sersha is no stranger to the camera. She's been in front of it for a long time, uh, acting for the likes of Joe Wright, who directed the 2005 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, Wes Anderson in uh, a little film you might have heard of, The Grand Food Best Hotel. Peter Jackson and just a couple more uh, directors out there right now. So she's kind of a big deal. And she's especially great here and in the previous effort from Greta. And honestly, this film is such a great place for her to show her dramatic talents. It's an evergreen role that every once in a while a new actor gets the chance to portray Joe and everyone brings something different to it. Everyone does a great job reimagining Joe for the generation that is now. And since this adaptation of Little Women came out last year, it's very important for Joe to feel modern to both millennials and Gen Zers, as well as feel like the Joe that audiences have come to know and love across the plethora of adaptations that are already out there. Little Women is a fantastic book and Every adaptation does something extremely right about it. With every writer or director or storyteller, there's always a character in the book or movie or song or whatever that is the character that the writer, storyteller, whatever, identifies with the most. I would hazard a guess that Alcott is Joe. I think that's the way that we're supposed to read that. I think that's the way that we're supposed to read this book. And it's especially the character that Greta Gerwig uh, <laughs> finds a direct in with in her adaptation. And one of the things I find so fascinating about this particular adaptation from Gerwig is that it seems like it's in conversation with the original book. That's what's so interesting to me. It's two feminist writers, two feminist storytellers in conversation with one another, one from beyond the grave, and one that's definitely asking harder questions about some of the character choices in her original novel. But we shouldn't just discuss the material that the film is based on. We should also discuss the film itself and the incredible actors that bring to life these iconic and historic characters. This is a stacked cast, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Saoirse Ronan obviously plays R. Joe Marsh in this adaptation. But we have an incredible supporting cast behind her. I mean, Emma Watson, who doesn't appear in a ton of movies nowadays, was most recently, I believe, in the uh, remake of Beauty and the Beast alongside Dan Stevens, and was previously in probably the films we all got to know her by the Harry Potter series. But Florence Pugh is probably one of the most notable other actors in this film. I mean, she single-handedly pretty much redeemed a character that in every previous adaptation, and even especially the precursor text, 
was never really liked by audiences. Everyone always hated her. And of course, Florence, being Florence, finds uh, an empathetic core to her and manages to help audiences connect to a part of Amy that they'd never seen before. That's right, Florence Pugh in this film plays Amy March. And that is a character that has been hated by people who have read the book for generations. And in pretty much every adaptation, that's not something they've been able to improve upon. I mean, 2019 was also the year of Florence Pugh. She was in a ton of movies, whether that was the more family-oriented Fighting With My Family, uh, which was about a wrestling icon and was based on a true story. The radical transformation she does in that film is ph phenomenal, and the incredible acting she has to do in that is also great. She followed that up in the summer with Midsommar, Ari Aster's follow-up to Hereditary, another horrifying entry, and, I mean, her work in that film is the center. The emotional center, the ride that the audience goes on, is completely through her perspective. And it's phenomenal. She carries us from the first frame to the last, and it's brilliant. I love it. And then she closed out 2019 with her role of Amy March in Greta Gerwig's adaptation of Little Women. Three fantastic performances that elevated her from a relatively unknown actor to one of the biggest actors currently working in Hollywood. So I think it's safe to say that Florence Pugh is going to be one of those actors to watch in the coming years because her, her performances across the board are phenomenal. And everything that she brings to the screen is her A-game. I would be remiss to not name the rest of the March sisters. And of course, I have to say, Eliza Scanlon brings something incredible to Beth in this film. I adore her work here because it's very understated. Compared to the other characters, uh, she her work is very much like under the surface. And it's beautiful what she's able to do with her dialogue and with the short time that she's on camera. It's phenomenal what she does here. Laura Dern has been one of my favorite actors since childhood. I remember the first time that I watch, watched <laughs> Jurassic Park. Uh, her role as Ellie Sadler in that film was one of my earliest connections to her, and seeing her in films like this and David Lynch's work over the years has truly made her, I think, one of the best actors to watch. Because, much like Scanlan in this film, her work is typically very understated, but the work that she's doing in each of the films is so different and varied and interesting that it's continuously fascinating to see what new role she picks. Last year she was in the fantastic marriage story as kind of a despicable dis divorce lawyer who uh, I thought was one of the best characters in that film besides uh, Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver's main couple. But she also closed out the year with Greta Gerwig's adaptation of Little Women, uh, being the uh, matriarch of the March family. And I think, once again, Lara turns in one of the most brilliant performances, I think, probably her best performance of last year and one of my favorite performances of hers from across her entire career. I would highly recommend going out and seeking out more roles by Laura Dern. Uh, she did quite a few films with, with uh, David Lynch. Uh, she's usually the most normal character in those movies. Um, but she's so fascinating to watch and whatever she does, she's usually one of the best parts and here's no exception. I love her every single time she's on screen. She brings a light to every scene that she's in uh, that I think the film would be less without Laura Dern. I mean, here at Movie Club, another alternate title that we could call it would be the Laura Dern Fan Club. Everyone here likes Laura Dern, and if you don't, you're not invited back. That's just the rules. I don't make them. Those are the rules that God gave me when I made this. Of course, America's favorite uh, soy boy right now, Timothy Chalamet, makes an appearance in this film as one of the more interesting characters, in my opinion, Laurie who is kind of the main love interest across the film. Um, to tell too much about his, his arc in this film would be to spoil the film itself. But let's just say I really liked him in this role. I think um, he's clearly not the focus, but I'm glad that they picked him to do this because it's important work that in lesser hands could have made this film lesser. Two more people that I think I have to talk about in this cast are the brilliant Chris Cooper and uh, the man who knows the highest number. Bob Odenkirk. Chris Cooper is a fantastic choice for Mr. Lawrence, uh, the caretaker for Laurie in this film. And the I think he does some of the best emotional work in this film. Uh, upon continuous revisits, obviously there is that scene that breaks your heart every single time, but I think uh, the scene with Mr. Lawrence at the fence 
to not spoil anything, is the thing that devastates me the most every single time I come back and watch this film. Every single time. It's just such a great moment. And it's so understated, but the work that uh, Saoirse and Cooper are doing here is phenomenal. Obviously, Bob Odenkirk is probably the uh, least on-screen presence in the film, um, but he is the patriarch of the March family. It just goes to show you how well cast this film is, and even though Bob Odenkirk barely is in it, he clearly fits here. He fits with the rest of this cast so well, and I think the casting director behind this, this film and the people who worked in that department deserve to be commended because this is a phenomenal team of actors to put together and assemble to tell this timeless story. Three quick crew members to mention because I think their work in this film is phenomenal. The first of which is our cinematographer, whose name I'm definitely going to butcher, York LaSalle, I believe that's how you pronounce it, they have a fancy last name, um, but their work as, as the director of photography and the cinematographer in this film is phenomenal. The incredible shots through mirrors, uh, the way that he frames all of the action only serves to enhance this brilliant story and helps bring us into this world uh, and truly conveys so many of these incredible emotions that were so brilliantly originally captured in Louisa May Alcott's novel, but are gorgeously and sumptuously created uh, for the screen here by both Gerwig and her DP. I also have to mention the famous composer behind the brilliant score that both interpolates classic music as well as original compositions into a gorgeous background uh, that enhances the storytelling both visually and orally. And that's from famed composer Alexander Despla, who has worked on quite a few films, both the Harry Potter films and the later, uh, later movies, as well as The Shape of Water, which is from one of my favorite directors. And last but not least, as always, I have to shout out the incredible work in the editorial department from the film editor, Nick Hoy. I think editing is one of the most crucial parts of the storytelling process because all of this is shot out of order. We have to go back and do ADR, uh, re-exposure, all these different pickups, color correction, et cetera, et cetera. And then for the editor to combine all of that crazy stuff that happened over two and a half-ish months into one singular 105-minute film is really impressive. And Nick Hoy handles that burden especially well. I could rant on and on and on about this adaptation of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women that was written for the screen and directed by Greta Gerwig. But I'd just simply be wasting more of your time. Because you've either already seen this film or you're about to enjoy it for the first time. And either way, I'm really excited for you. If you haven't seen it before, you're about to delve into one of the greatest literary masterpieces of all time. And if you have seen it before, I hope you'll find something new this time that will make you fall more in love with this adaptation and with this original text. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend you pick up a copy of the book because it will expand scenes that they had to drop for the movie for pacing sake and will tell you even more stories about the March sisters that they just couldn't fit into this movie. And you know what? More of the March sisters sounds like a pretty dang good deal to me. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as tonight we screen here at Movie Club 2019's Little Women.